as someone who who is new to open source but not new to software and also considering someone who might be new to software and also new to open source or doesn't have any idea like how to get started in that i i know that you can do like a google search and look for open source projects but it, it usually leaves you with a lot of projects, um, but not still not knowing how to get started. So my question to you that I wanted to, you know, make for like a clippable piece of content that could be helpful for like beginners, like how would you get started regardless of your experience level contributing to open source? Or if you want to mention like what would be a better for like a, a new developer versus a, a more experienced developer and just how that all works for someone who just doesn't know. I think it's the same for everybody. They don't even have to be a developer to contribute to open source. So um, if someone's a developer or not, got one day experience, got no experience or got you know, 10, 20 years experience, the, 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 my answer is always the same. I think look at um, the projects you're using already is it was one way to look at it as one avenue. Those projects will probably move quite fast. So we mentioned like Next, React, um, Laravel, they'll move quite quickly. And I wouldn't recommend... Um, someone starting off with those. If you're using a smaller library, like a date function or something that's a lot smaller, then maybe you want to look into uh, getting involved with that. I see people saying, oh, I try to contribute to Kubernetes and you know my pull request X, Y, and Z. And it's like, yes, the project moves so fast. So by the time someone does review it and gets back to you and all that sort of stuff, then the project's moved on. And so now you might have conflicts in your changes. It conflicts with somebody else's. You're setting yourself to fail. And I think, you know, if someone wants to do to get there in the future, then great. But um, I don't think you can do that on your, on your first time. I think people just want to contribute to the, the biggest and the most popular and the most starred repos. And I just think, I mean, you wouldn't go to the gym and go, right, I want to put all the weights on this uh, squat rack. I want to squat like the whole gym. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So um, so so wherever, wherever anyone is, uh, definitely get started. Um, I would say speak to your friends, your, your community, your network. What projects have they got? Maybe contribute to those because you know them. They're going to provide you maybe a bit more support. Their projects aren't going to move, you know, silly fast because there isn't like 20 people behind the project, um, like core maintainers um, and a big community, you know, racing it, racing it forward. So that's what I would do, suggest. You can search on GitHub. They have an amazing search. You can search for projects that use a certain language. They were active in the last month. And you can search for topics and good first issue label on the issues. I mean, there's so many things you can do. But to be honest, I wouldn't recommend that unless there's something really specific that someone is, is like super specific that someone is looking for. Um, I, I would definitely speak to join a community, see what projects they've got is, is definitely the first place to go. And people shouldn't forget about their own projects because contribution to your project, you, you see one side of it. You're following their standards and yes, you might better influence it and so forth. But you also want your own project. You want to set your own standards and you want people to submit issues and pull requests to you because for, by reading those, your issues and pull requests that you raise on other people will improve like a hundred times. Um, because you're always going to give more context because you're going to say, well, someone's raised this issue, but I don't get what they mean. And, and, or they already this pull request, but what was it for? What issue was it for? What they're trying to fix? I'm not sure. When you get to see the other side, it will definitely help you improve, um, yourself. And one last tip I'd like to say, and we can, we can dig as deep as you want in all of these, but one last tip uh, that I would love people to remember is when you do find a project where, however you found it, go to the pull request tab and go to the closed pull requests. And then you'll see a list of all the ones that were merged, that were accepted, and all the ones that were closed and rejected. The ones with the red icon were closed and rejected. Go look at those. And were they closed and rejected in a friendly way? It's absolutely fine that they were closed and rejected. If they, uh, if there's a comment that says, thank you so much for your contribution, but you didn't read our contributing guide, you didn't raise an issue that was then triaged by the team, so therefore you know, we could see if we wanted these changes, then that's absolutely fine. But if the pull request was closed and rejected with no comment or in a really unfriendly way, then that's probably a project you don't want to contribute to. That's actually a, a really good tip there, a pro tip, because I, I would have never even thought about doing that. And that, that makes good sense because like you said, it kind of goes back to, you know, some, some some developers can be a little toxic and overprotective of their work. And, and if they're, you know, if they're very nitpicky for things and, and you know, like you said, not in a, a nice way of handling rejection for pull requests and, you know, that's definitely a good thing to look out for, for sure. And, and I, I would have never thought about that. The, the question that I had, which is kind of what I've come across when I 
get the itch to contribute for open source um, is that when I do look for things that, you know, are programming languages or stacks that I'm familiar with, even when I find like good first task or good for beginners, sometimes they still feel a little like, man, like what are you expecting from a beginner to, to jump in here and do? And then if it's like a, a framework that I've never worked with, but I've been interested in, like I, I don't know if I would be comfortable, especially if I was a beginner beginner. And that was a lot of the stuff that discouraged me from contributing or trying to contribute to open source when I was first getting started was because a lot of the good first tasks felt overwhelming and felt like, I don't know, this is going to be harder than, than what I'm capable of. I also, I don't know. I, I, at, at the time I know now, but at the time I, what I felt was like, I don't know how, how, how much I can ask of the, the people here, how, how, how much help can I request to try to do this? Because when you think open source, you, you're, you know, when you're on a, on a project and you're getting paid to code, there's usually senior level developers who will take the time and help you with the tasks that you're working on as a junior, if you do get stuck and with open source, sometimes I don't, I don't know where that where you get that. And um, I, I'm sure that the, the answer is probably, they probably have Slack groups or discords for the, the, the framework or the library that has, um, you know, the, the GitHub repo and is open source. And maybe that's where you ask, but it, it felt, and it still feels a, a bit overwhelming to where I go in there and I'm like, ah, this is just too much work, <laughs> you know? And, and then it feels like, I don't, I don't know if I want to take the, the time out of my weekend or, or evening to go and, and, commit so much so much effort to something that is labeled beginner or easy or, or you know whatnot and and doesn't feel that way to a, a secret i mean it's two great points there and i'd love to address them individually the first one good first issues most of them are not good first issues it's rot. It's it's used incorrectly. One because the maintainers can't be bothered to fill in the details of the steps you need to take to contribute. A, I believe a good first issue. Anyone who's never not familiar with the project, not familiar even with the language, could follow the steps and make the changes and, and contribute. It should take the maintainers longer to write the issue than to make the change themselves. But that's not the case. And then you get other people who go, "Oh, I'm stuck on this. I don't know what to do." good first issue and hoping someone else resolves it, which then ruins a good good first issue label. I mean, there are there is a label help wanted, but then the odd thing is I see issues with the label help wanted and good first issue. And those two are like opposite ends of the scale. If your help's wanted, you, you can't write a good issue because you don't know what you need to do. And if it's a good first issue, then you should write a good good issue because you know what to do, but you want to try and encourage people to contribute to your project. So... Yeah, I think that that label is not is not great, to be honest. Uh, I think people use it in, incorrectly. And maybe there's some content that we all can create about that around that to to educate people into what a good first issue really, really is. Um, and then your second point was where to get help. And this is quite an interesting one because you're right. They, they usually have a discord or, or GitHub discussions or something like that. Um, I didn't say Slack because I I'm just tired of joining Slack groups. I'm trying to leave all the Slack groups and then just don't see them from, for communities at all. Um, so join those and, and do ask for help. But you're probably unlikely to get help from a maintainer. It's probably going to be a community member, especially if you're you're new there. No one's ever seen you, and you you know you pick up say an issue that requires a, quite a bit of help. That's why I always tell people to kind of do the eighty twenty rule. If you if you want to get involved in the project, do something, pick up an issue. Um, obviously, you know, check the check the contributing guide. Do you get it assigned to you first or not? Most of the time you do, but do check. And um, pick one that is 80% you can do and maybe 20% you can't. And then you might need some help for that. Um, I think that's a really good way to start. Therefore, you can do a big piece of the work and just say, look, I've got this little bit left. Can someone just give me a direction of what to do? And then the best way to do that is by doing that every time. So your next issue um, ha is the same thing. And your next issue is the same thing, maybe even 90 to 10 kind of, you know, ratio. And then after you've done quite a few of those and you're not jumping around between projects, it seems that some people just jump around, do like all the fixed typo issues or the, all the, the real good first issues across um, projects. And they never really get into a project They never really network with the community or the maintainers. Um, I've seen people in Eddy Hub be consistently add value. Like I said, let's just take the example of um, 
uh, triaging the um, the issues. Oh, this is a duplicate of this, and you know this is being assigned to someone else. Thank you very much. Maybe ask for another issue. Just all these useful comments, and they're not even a maintainer. They can do this with without. Um, they can't assign and they can't open and close, but they can do everything else. So they're adding so much value, which I think is super important. And same with the code reviews. Um, you, they were doing code reviews, um, not from a technical point of view, but they were reading the documentation and adding value from, from that point of view, which is, is just so important. Um, but then when they said, you know what, actually, I do want to get into a bit of coding, but I do need help. They had the opposite problem. They didn't have the problem of no one wants to help me. They had the problem, which was, Everyone wanted to help them, every community member, every maintainer, because they had added so much value for months. They knew they were there to stick around and believe in the project and, and so forth. So like, yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to ask me any questions? Do you want to call? Do you want to pair program? Like they just had so much choice because they were there to stick around. I think a lot of people just jump around, like I said, and then they don't uh, create those good connections. Like really, really good <laughs> advice. And it's it's something that I wish I would have understood and, and known uh, sooner, maybe it would have helped me contribute to open source. It, it is interesting, though, because there is there's a lot of truth to the more you help, the more people will want to help you. Right. And you, you kind of get what you give. And I, I can see how that would be great advice for a beginner, especially if they're feeling overwhelmed or under experienced to be able to contribute to the code to do some of the, the smaller things that may or may not earn them green squares, but will help them um, get established in a community. I will say that um, as someone who has not, not contributed, but has looked at different projects to contribute to, and then just felt like I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I have every excuse in the world to why I didn't contribute, but something that I find that I do often is like, you know, with Laravel or with uh, Next.js, when I start learning a new framework, I, I tell myself, oh, it'd be good if I went and contributed to projects that use these frameworks. And I, and I do think that that's good advice, but what ends up happening is that if, when you're unfamiliar with a framework and you want to learn it, it's it almost feels like the same as onboarding in a new code base. Um, because once you're familiar with a framework, you you understand how it's structured and you, you, you kind of know how to navigate your way around. But when you're not, it's very much like a new code base with a new programming language that you've never used, where you're just kind of trying to figure where every figure out where everything is. And as someone who has onboarded uh, different projects before and have felt that way, there is that overwhelming feeling of like, man, it usually takes me like a, a couple months to get comfortable in a code base. And then I'm going to go jump into a framework that I'm not familiar with and try to contribute. And then I, I kind of, I don't know if I talk myself out of it before even giving it a try or because I know how much work and effort it can be. I'm just like, no, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go do something else. So that's, I, again, I think that's just more of a personal struggle, but I, I, I feel like I can't be the only one that feels that way. So um, maybe better good first issues and sticking with something that I actually work with rather than like thinking it's a good idea to go try something new, at, at least to get started. Maybe that's not the best way to. I, I think um, you probably, you know, kind of speak for like the majority um, of the people in the tech world you know what you said so i think you know that's it's so important i'm sure it resonated with so many people um I mean, one thing we do in eddie hub which i'm hoping other projects start doing is we don't use the good first issue label what we do again for the search engine and discovery and stuff like that but we have a point system so anyone familiar with agile you kind of uh, story point your your features um, and our good first issues are always one and two points um, and then we go up to kind of you know 13 or 21 points but the thing is no one knows what the, the value of those points are really only i do or the maintainers do but they know that a five pointer is harder than a three pointer so if someone's only doing um three pointers and they want to you know they've got a bit more time want to challenge themselves they could pick a five pointer but i wouldn't recommend they jump to an eight pointer or if they you know haven't got much time at the moment they might go a bit smaller and pick a smaller number and for our one pointers for good first issues we only allow each person to get assigned that um once they can't kind of just keep doing one point a good first issue because that, that takes it away from other people we actually have a tool that was built by our maintainers where um, it actually checks to see if they've done a one pointer already because we want everyone to get a one pointer we don't have loads of them so we do want to want to share them around um but yeah it's a good first issue is hard and like you said just getting familiar with a project takes time which is why i think it's 
it's important people try and pick something that they can get something done quickly is in a smaller issue but maybe they're familiar with the language and framework and it's just that project that they're not familiar with rather than trying to just take it all on at once because you just can't and it just yeah it kind of setting ourselves up to fail if we do that yeah i i love the idea of the story points because i feel that um you know if if, if you've worked in the industry at all you you're familiar with that and that um feels like a much better way of <clears throat> being able to gauge like the complexity and how difficult the task might be if you know anyone who's worked in scrum or agile kanban that has dealt with story pointing and understands like the concepts behind you know what what points mean in stories and and that that feels like such a better way than using the good first issue label or or beginner's welcome i i, I don't know the, the the labels but i i know that they have a few that are like that and those just feel like they're just not not as accurate or represent the the amount of effort that will go into it as as points would so i like i like that idea maybe that should be something that um more code bases or open source projects adopt um because I, I really do think that that would be a little bit just easier to navigate and find tasks based on points uh, rather than looking for the tags that that you know say that it's good for a beginner so everyone watching, uh, comment below and vote for Dorian to open source his uh, his project and also use points. There we go, like win-win. So I have like a, gosh, 